Hello, as always, thank you for joining me. Today's counselling conversation is going to be around dyspraxia, or as I think it's known now as DCD, which is Developmental Coordination Disorder. And a lot of my information, I've looked at the Dyspraxia Foundation website, which is really helpful, um, and I can't, can't recommend it enough. Dyspraxia, a developmental disorder of the brain as it develops in childhood, causing difficulties with coordination of movement and also something that myself as a dyspraxic has only recently, really in the last year, really fully understood the implications and all the different levels that this can impact. Now, in the counselling conversation setting with the clients, you know, I often recognise that somewhere in childhood things have happened and perhaps they've developed a sense of self. What I haven't realised until very recently is that with my own sense of self, dyspraxia has really been the building blocks um, for me and for others. For example, a childhood nickname was Clumsy Clora. And so as a child, you swallow that whole and you believe that about yourself, that you know, you're know just pretty rubbish at things. You're not great at sport because you can't have the hand-eye coordination. Um, your gross motor skills, your coordination in big movements can be impacted quite severely. So as I said, the hand-eye, the hand-foot, football, tennis, um, all of those things. The coordination between one side of the body and the other works in a really bizarre way. Sometimes I just can't see that. And so that's part of the gross motor coordination. And also tripping, dropping, knocking into things. Um, lack of that um, spatial dimension, a clumsy gait, all of those things for myself tripping up dropping things and bumping into things all the time and so you develop this critical inner voice well there you go again there you go again but actually it's not you it's your brain patterns it's the wiring in your brain that's not quite as it should be and so you need to be kind to yourself and work out certain things for the things that you know are impacted for yourself. Then you can move on to the symptoms of the fine motor skills. So um, two-handed tasks, so using cutlery, dropping knives, all of those things. Um, cooking, burning yourself all the time because you can't quite judge with the trays. Um, ironing, again, burning yourself because you don't quite work out where the cloth and where the iron is. Grasp issues. So again, pens, tools, keys, dropping them all the time. Um, makeup, slightly clumsy, dropping things, shaving, cutting yourself. Tying laces, that's one for me. Tying laces, dreadful at them. My dad had to actually work out a separate way for me to do it with two loops because I, I just couldn't work out the other way. So that's just small movements. Often, and not purely, but often it's not being able to tell your left from your right, or you don't use all left-handed for everything, all right-handed for things. You can skip between the two. And I always struggle with my left and my right. Speech and language. Speaking continuously, I'm not sure I've got that one. And repeating, I'm not sure I've got that one either. Language coordination, getting your words in the wrong order. I have that a lot and I also have the Mrs Malaprop where I use perhaps the wrong word but it sounds very similar. Eye movement. You lose your place when you're reading and tracking. Tracking a moving object that you can, oh, where did it go? So perception, sensitive to noise, speed to touch, 
can be to smell, can be to taste, and it can affect your perception when you're driving. Some dyspraxics are so severely affected by perception that they don't drive at all. With me, I'm okay with my driving, but I'm not that great with my parking. So uh, learning, difficulty with instructions. And this has really been my input into understanding my dyspraxia this very year. When being given instructions, I cannot understand the instructions. So then it causes a row, I get my uptight, I get myself all shaky. And so what I've now learnt through listening to other dyspraxics is that actually let go of the instructions. Other people telling you how something works is other people's perception. And so if your perception is impacted by your dyspraxia, what you need to do is to learn the instructions that work for you because it's not about the instructions. It's about what you need to learn to do. Now that sounds very basic and very simple, but when you put it into action as a dyspraxic, it makes total sense. I'm going to learn how to do what I need to do. I'm not going to learn the instructions of how you perceive how you need to do. And that's very different. Okay, so we can be impulsive, we can be difficult with sleep, uh, listening to a tone or a content sometimes can be difficult. Again, um, it can be some of it, it can be all of it. Like, um, We can have good and bad days. I know that if I'm out running and I'm going to fall over, it often happens on the way home. And that's because I'm tired. So when you have good and bad days, if you know that you're tired, stressed, lots going on, multitasking, all of those things, then prepare yourself for how you can approach that. So counselling can help with the disconnect from others' perception of things and help you connect to how you're impacted by your dyspraxia. So it's helping to look in a solution focused way and it's tighten up on that sense of value and self-worth. You know, when you realise that you're a clumsy Clora, not because you're just rubbish at everything, but because you have something that impedes, scientifically, you can't change how things work in your brain for coordination. And so you can start putting some scaffolding in place that then support yourself. I hope that was helpful. Um, it's not something we come across every day, but I suspect there are lots of us out there who are impacted by being dyspraxic and not recognising those little steps that might be us. Subscribe, leave comments, let me know if this affects you or if this affects one of your loved ones and how you work around it. As I say, for me, Another dyspraxic talking to me about instructions has been so helpful. So let's start that ball rolling. And remember, have a look at the Dyspraxia Foundation website. Really helpful. Thank you. Bye bye.